Welcome. Today is Tuesday, June 15th. This is Career Force Minnesota Explore Careers. Today we're focusing on the security industry. We're going to find out a lot more about all of the different locations, the companies, the type of work, and uh, what's really required for people interested in work in the security industry. Glad to have the following companies here with me today. We have Allied Universal, Minnesota Department of Corrections, Alina Health, G4S, and JDM Patrol. Uh, a good cross-section of both uh, Twin Cities Metro companies as well as statewide opportunities. So first presenter, so happy to introduce is Ron Cosper of Allied Universal. He's gonna give us a great overview of the industry and the company. So welcome, Ron. Second. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, so just to kind of jump right into brass tacks, my name is Ron Cosper. I'm with Allied Universal Security Services. I'm a Midwest recruiter with them, so I handle most of the territory, uh, but not in, or, uh, including, of course, Minneapolis and Minnesota. Um, Allied Universal, we're now uh, one of the largest security companies now on the planet um, after a recent uh, kind of jo a joining between the two companies, the G4S and Allied Universal that took place earlier this year. We should have the full completed uh, acquisition actually occur as of October. Uh, so that's super exciting. What that means for everybody involved here, though, is, is that you have an opportunity to join uh, forces with one of the largest employers on the entire planet, <laughs> seventh on the globe, as a matter of fact, third inside of the United States. Um, and it's a really kind of a good question, Liz, is what is security and, and kind of what does it mean to the uh, average person? You know, a lot of security is just observe and report as well as just having a very, very big, heavy influence inside of customer service experience. Um, and then just being able to kind of be that uh, go-to person, uh, guy or gal, whichever, uh, with regards to additional information or kind of directing individuals to get those questions answered. Um, a lot of people might think, you know, oh, if I don't have experience inside of pro uh, security or possibly even military or police that I don't necessarily know if this would fit in for me. Um, not necessarily true. We have lots of different opportunities, some as uh, certain positions, kind of like lobby ambassador, where you would be able to answer tw questions directly or even things as a patrol officer, whether that be foot or driving. Um, our company itself is actually, uh, and I'm not sure, Liz, how you want to kind of direct the um, uh, slides itself, but that'll be perfect. Yep. <laughs> um, right now, we're actually uh, the largest, like I said, security provider. We have been for just about over half of 100 years, something like that, um, depending upon how you look at the acquisitions and how they've kind of gone between all of our companies. We originally started as Allied Barton, uh, but we are one of the largest in the uh, United States and by extension the planet. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, Liz. What you'll find with us is, is that there's lots of opportunities for growth. As a matter of fact, 65% of our managerial staff start as a boots on the ground officer. Um, and if you even held things in the past, like a security clearance, Allied Universal has an opportunity to not only get that reinstated, but possibly even promote you and sponsor you for a higher uh, sponsorship of your clearance level. Um, obviously with full-time employment will come full-time benefits, medical, dental, optical, 401k, tuition reimbursement through the applicable universities, as well as first responder discounts and pro, uh, discounts and perks, things to that extent, depending upon what you're looking for. Um, we also have a referral program, which is really great and is uncapped. So if you have any friends or family that might be looking for work, um, but don't necessarily want to work at the same job site, that's fine. We can split those and make that a little bit of a less tense Thanksgiving and place them at other job sites around the state, um, as well as inside of the city. Uh, if you'd like to go to the next slide, Liz. With that, uh, the promotability aspect of our company is very, very grand. We usually start all, uh, all individuals off as a security professional, guard, officer, that sort of terminology. Um, the security industry is very much still developing its search engine optimization and optimizing. And so generally speaking, uh, you may see some, uh, some positions rather labeled as security professional, but I can assure you at the end of the day, it is no different than your security officer or guard. Um, oftentimes you'll find a security officer is a little bit more driven towards the armed aspect and sometimes might require a little bit more additional experience, uh, like what you might see with cleared sites, uh, secret TSSCI and above, etc. Uh, but as you can see, this is kind of a little bit of a ladder of what we have here at our company. Um, usually individuals can grow very quickly within about six to seven months of a promotability. 
Uh, I myself actually started as a boots on the ground officer and was for about a month uh, until I was promoted into a supervisor's position. From there, I was promoted into an operations manager's position. Uh, operations, I actually jumped over and went into the admin side and am now a recruiter. So uh, right now across the entire United States, I think we're hiring, um, I think in total, it's just about 20 to 30,000 guards, maybe even upwards to about 40,000 with the new acquisition. Uh, but we definitely have lots of opportunities and would be happy to have anybody involved. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. In addition to that, uh, we really much believe not only but from a promote from within, but also promoting our communities and trying to not only strengthen our bond with the communities, but also our community based organizations uh, like the wonderful people over with Minnesota, uh, Minnesota works. So we really appreciate all of that efforts and helps and kind of helping us reach out to everybody, especially with career force as well, looking to help individuals get back uh, into the workforce through Minnesota, as well as uh, wherever we can extend our reach. Um, and that'll bring us to the final record or our final uh, slide here today. Um, again, my name is Ronald Cosper. It's like Casper the ghost, but instead of an A, there's an O. Uh, and I definitely won't ghost you. If you give me a call and looking to set up some sort of an interview, I'd be happy to try and get you through those next stages of processes. And of course, answer any kind of questions that you might have. Um, if you are looking to apply in directly, we do have an opportunity that you can text allied to 86754. That's text allied to 86754 and then we'll have an individual be able to kind of walk you through the processes um, in addition to that if anybody is looking for any information uh, from myself directly uh, this is going to be my direct number please don't let the michigan number fool you it's just where they pinned my area code <laughs> um, if you do have any kind of questions with regards to the minneapolis minnesota area i would be happy to answer thanks ron so let's what really do you look for when you're recruiting people? Um, you know, background in customer service. Do you need a background in law or legal studies? Really great question. Oftentimes, depending upon what skill sets are needed, depending upon the site, it is possible. We do have some sites, for instance, that are going to require a little bit more experience inside of uh, actual military or police presence, or if you've had some sort of training in that. Um, that can definitely be very, very good to have and beneficial for those transferable skills. Um, oftentimes, if we're looking for some sites that are going to require uh, six months experience or more, we can usually work with individuals who have more of a customer service focus, as a lot of the a lot of our transferable skills are between the sort of service industry as well as the uh, kind of just protective services in general. Um, so you don't necessarily need any experience. If you have some, even if that's along the lines of, um, like I said, observe and report or even loss prevention, we would be happy to speak with you. Uh, however, we do have entry level positions as well. What are the physical requirements? Really great question. Oftentimes you're going to find that a majority of our positions are going to require uh, an indoor and outdoor capabilities of walking and standing for long periods of time. I'd say in excess of four to six hours per day. Uh, there are obviously times you'd be able to take a break or sit or do those types of breathers. Um, but in generally speaking, outside of uh, walking and standing for long periods of time, you could usually expect to lift anything about 20 pounds over your head. Um, that could be in depending upon the site in which you go to. Opposite to that, sometimes there's absolutely none of those requirements. <laughs> and most of the times you may even just be stationed at a desk uh, for an extended period of time. It really just is kind of dependent upon the uh, the site in which we're looking to bring on the individual. And that's what's really great about our recruiting team is we would definitely be able to answer any of those questions that you might have with regards to or revolving around the job's daily duties. Thanks. Yeah, to follow up on that then. So it sounds like there are some desk jobs. Are there people, are there jobs for people with disabilities beyond customer service, for instance, uh, people, person with a heart condition or COPD? So, you know, you might not be able to run, you know, a half mile. Right, exactly. Um, you know, in the, at the end of the day, you can't outrun a radio, is what my granddad always used to tell me. So that's the one thing that is nice. Uh, we definitely are an equal opportunity employer in addition to that. So we do everything within our possibility to make all accommodations for anybody who is experiencing some sort of a temporary or permanent disability. Uh, we would absolutely love the idea or the opportunity to be able to speak with you in general about those opportunities, um, as well as see if it doesn't work at our particular site that we had in mind. Uh, we do have thousands and thousands of jobs, especially with our team up alongside with G4S, 
who has their own side of, uh, has a whole another side of their own book that Miranda will be able to go over into as well. Uh, but we would be happy to discuss any of those options with any and uh, any and all applicants. Sure. Good. Thank you. Yeah, and we're getting another question about age. So it just sounds like you know, email Ron, uh, apply, have that conversation. Yeah, because I know that there's a great need, and um, I you know I looked at your site, uh, Ron, and Allied has a lot of separate business units. Yes, so it looks like there are a lot of possibilities. Absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, we even have one side that is just actually our janitorial services. So if that would be something that would interest you, Allied has that. Um, but then we also have another function that's also inside of our People's Mark, which is an entirely different division. And People's Mark will actually take care of jobs that are outside of security, but are still revolving around the ASU brand. Great. Uh, Hey, with thank you so to, much. Oh, go ahead. Of course, ahead. yeah. With, of course, just one last thing with regards to the age uh, verification. In some instances, it will require a minimum of 21 years of age. There are some sites that we may be able to allow you to go at 18 years of age, but that is all just very dependent upon what we're looking for specifically based within the contract and the union standards. Sure. And there are background checks, correct, in the drug correct. screenings? Correct. Yeah, but through right. every single one, and I can tell you also that this would be a tax-based and taxed uh, a taxed position rather. <laughs> so you would receive a 1099 at the end of the year. Um, there isn't any kind of a commission-based or, or something to that extent. This would be taxed. Okay, so some of your positions are 1099 rather than paying as a W-2. I apologize. I apologize. No, no, no. My my apologies. There, all of them are W two, not ten ninety nine. All okay. of them are W two. Yeah, we want to wait. Confused sometimes. Yeah, my apologies. <laughs> okay, great. Well, Ron's other exciting news is that Allied Universal has recently purchased G four S. So, Ron, why don't you make the introduction to Miranda? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so uh, Miranda and I had the opportunity to uh, actually e-meet yesterday through Liz. So we appreciate that, especially um, since that's our first ability to kind of uh, connect in with one another. Miranda is going to be on the opposite side. She's actually the recruitment manager for all of the Great Lakes market, uh, which can be inclusive of, again, Minneapolis, Indiana. Um, and Miranda, I'll let you speak a bit more to your territory just in case I miss anything. <laughs> Uh, but she is also another uh, tremendous team, uh, another tremendous team leader on the G4S AUS uh, kind of acquisition. So I'm going to go ahead and yield and allow her to talk about what her side has for sure. Thank you, everyone. Um, yes, as Liz and, and Ron said, my name is Miranda King. I am the recruitment manager, um, over the Great Lakes market, uh, specifically for G4S uh, for now until October. Um, I cover Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and North Dakota, but obviously we are here today to talk specifically about Minnesota, so I'll, I'll kind of keep it mostly to that. Um, I have a team of recruiters that reports to me that does sit um, right there in downtown Minneapolis. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about our, our business there and, and some of the things that we have going on. We certainly have quite a few jobs open at the moment and a lot of opportunity. So we can go to the next slide, Liz. Um, so just a little bit about G4S. Um, as Ron had, had brought up, we have recently merged with Allied Universal, which is a very exciting development for us and, and also just for the security industry in general. Um, it makes us the third largest employer in the United States, period. We are only behind Amazon and Walmart. So that is something I never thought I'd be able to say in terms of working for a company that large. It's, it's very, very exciting. Um, I pulled just some North American stats as, as an overview. You'll see a lot of different information there, but I think the real key takeaway is that we have a very diverse portfolio of opportunities available as we cover um, more than 9,000 different clients. Um, and uh, something that I'm really proud of is the, the growth and the diversity of our job force. So you'll see that 25% of our employees are military veterans. Um, and, and having that diverse workforce is, is very important to us. And it's something I think, especially in the Twin Cities, we've, we've, really, um, we've really been great at. And in terms of getting people with different backgrounds and different types of experiences to be able to best serve our clients. Um, we can go to the next one, Liz. Um, so a little bit about our, our Minnesota business, um, which will be very soon merged with, with Ron. Um, 
brands. Um, we cover a ton of different types of clients. So it, it gives uh, a lot of variety in the types of opportunities that we have. Um, it's everything from banks and financial centers and office buildings where you might just be doing indoor patrols or even just stationed behind the desks in more of like a receptionist type position um, through two stadiums. Anyone there locally might recognize the two that I have on there as Target Field and US Bank, which are both our clients. Um, we cover security for them year round. And then we also do specific ramp ups for the different seasons for the teams. Um, and the majority of the folks that end up joining us on a seasonal basis to maybe do security for the baseball games end up staying with us year round um, in a full-time or, or part-time basis. So um, whether it's working there at, at the stadium um, or one of our other different local sites. Um, we have clients that are manufacturing and distribution facilities through to high-end apartment buildings, both downtown and in the varying suburbs. Um, city center, it's a huge client. It's actually where our downtown office is based. So we get to provide security for our own office. Um, and we also do a lot of business with different places of worship uh, throughout Minneapolis and St. Paul, as well as the surrounding suburbs. So really diverse and all of those security officer roles at each of those different places will have a lot of similarities, but there will be some unique new nuances as well, which allows us to accommodate for people that have different requirements or different interests. Um, uh, in, in their career. So uh, we can go to the next one, Liz. Someone asked about Rochester, Minnesota. We'll get there. I've got a map that I'll show you guys. Um, a, a little bit probably similar to to what Ron went over, just the role of a security officer. Um, the the roles will vary, like I said, based on the site that, that you're at. But the unique thing for me in looking at it is um, our officers really are first responders at the site, sites in which they're stationed. We're not the police, right? We're not paramedics, um, you know, things like that. But we are the individual that's there to help step in and mitigate if something happens or even to be the one to contact the local authorities in the instances where they're needed. Um, all of our op officers are CPR trained, regardless of the site that they're going to. And, and we've had phenomenal stories of our officers actually saving people's lives while on the job. Um, that's certainly not something that uh, that you probably get experience in every line of work. Um, but some standard tasks, if we're looking at day-to-day -day duties for an officer, regardless of site, monitoring incoming and outgoing visitors and employees at the sites, doing different patrols. We do have some sites where you will be doing driving patrols where GPRS provides a vehicle and you perhaps patrol a parking lot or a parking ramp. Um, other patrols are walking your assigned route within a building, whether that's a manufacturing facility or a high rise office space. Um, we sound and respond to alarms. We're the ones that investigate any incidents that happen and, and report on what took place. Um, we proactively identify safety and security concerns and um, kind of similar to what Ron said, the biggest piece of it really is customer service. Um, not only are we dealing with the employees at the sites in, in which we're stationed, we're also dealing with the general public. Um, so that's why we have a lot of success actually hiring people from retail backgrounds, um, people that have worked in call centers, things along those lines. We will train you on what you need to know to be a security guard. We will get you licensed. We'll get you CPR certified. We will help you with all that up front. Um, but that customer service piece is a lot of times the thing that you can't teach. So having that background is, is uh, really beneficial. We can go to the next one. Someone asked, is a driver's license required? It depends on the site. If you're not driving, typically it's not required. So there's there's opportunities for folks with uh, both. Um, some of the information on roles and benefits, and you'll see here that that handy map that I mentioned kind of shows our hubs, if you will, of areas where we have different opportunities, specifically in this part of the region. So you'll see obviously big hub kind of Minneapolis east through to the Wisconsin border um, up in St. Cloud. We've got a pocket in Duluth. We've got a pocket in Rochester. Um, and then our Minneapolis office actually oversees North Dakota as well. Um, so you'll see some things there in Grand Forks and, and Bismarck and other places in North Dakota that I've never been to and am not super familiar with. So 
but they're there. We've got the opportunities. Um, we've got full-time, part-time seasonal work available. It's, it's, you know, through the week shift, it's overnight shifts, it's weekend shifts. It's really anything you could kind of think of or want. Um, for the Twin Cities specifically, looking at Minneapolis and St. Paul, as well as the surrounding suburbs, our average wage right now is $16.30 an hour. Um, and we work actively every single day with our clients to make sure that if needed, they are increasing their wages on site. Um, we have both union and non-union sites, um, depending on what someone's interested in, we have the option for both. The union sites obviously have additional benefits. They have annual pay raises um, and, and kind of mandated pay across the board, which is really beneficial to a lot of people. Um, but all of our full-time employees, union or not, receive benefits. So that's health benefits, it's disability, um, it's PTO, the whole nine yards. Um, we do have specific G4S benefits um, as well that we offer all of our employees, full-time or part-time, seasonal or year-round. Um, the list there is certainly not inclusive of everything, but I've picked out some of my favorites, um, which include daily pay, um, which gives you the option to get paid on a daily basis what you've earned versus waiting two weeks for your whole paycheck. Um, throughout COVID and, and even now, we we are continuing to offer all of our employees a service called Doctor on Demand, where you and your family members can schedule low-cost virtual meetings with doctors um, to go over general health checks, physicals, things like that. Um, and FinFit, which is um, a, a company that we partner with that actually offers um, different financial wellness um, tips, whether it's just tips on how much should I be saving, how much should I be putting into a 401k, to actually offering low um, low interest rate loans and assistance with student debt repayment, um, things along those lines. So um, a lot of different benefits for our employees. Um, the tax on the daily pay is the same as what you would pay regular taxes. Um, I get asked this question a lot. Um, should I only apply to G4S if I've already worked in security or if I'm a military veteran or if I used to be a cop? The answer is no. Um, anyone that has any of the things on this list is 100% encouraged to apply. Um, I actually did a poll of all, all of our hiring managers in Minnesota specifically and said, give me the one thing that makes a great employee for you. And this is what they came back with. So, um, you know, you should apply for a job if you are compassionate. Um, we are dealing with the general public. If you can interact with people in a compassionate way, listen to them, understand them, help them out. If that's something that you're good at and you enjoy, you would be good in this job. Um, if you are driven um, and, and motivated to move up the ranks and build a career, I would say, especially in the Twin Cities, about 95% of the folks that we have that are in leadership positions started as an officer. They worked their way up to shift supervisor, site supervisor, account manager. Our district manager started as officers. Um, so we have those opportunities for our employees. Um, and, and we try to hire people that are motivated to move up into those types of positions. Um, obviously great with customer service. We went over that a ton. Um, that's a huge skill for us. Um, someone that is alert and always thinking ahead. You know, this is kind of observe and report. Uh, job. So if you are the type of person, a little bit like me, if I'm being honest, that tends to miss stuff that's going on and stuff kind of goes straight over your head, maybe not the best job. But if you're the type of person that notices things, that feels comfortable seeing something and saying something like those signs you see in the airport, you would be fantastic in this role. Um, and the most important thing for me is if you are looking for a stable growing industry, security is one of the safest bets you can make. Throughout COVID, when things were shut down and manufacturing facilities closed and restaurants closed, those were our customers. But the fact of the matter is, even if there aren't employees or visitors coming in and out, that building still needs to be guarded. We, we grew as an organization in 2020. In our region alone, we had one of our best years ever for new sales, for continued sales, for extending contracts with our clients. Regardless of what's going on in the economy, things need to be safe and they need to be secure and there needs to be someone there to do that. So, um, you know, anyone that's been impacted negatively by things maybe recessing a little bit um, or closing down, security is a great option. 
um, to kind of work in probably as close to recession proof as, as you can get. So um, I think the next slide is my last slide, if I'm not mistaken, maybe it is. Um, so I've included here um, a handy QR code. So if you're on your computer, you can take a screenshot and scan that. If you're looking on your phone, screenshot your screen, you can scan it in later, but scan that code. It will open up a Google calendar for you. You pick a time and a day that you want, and it will get you right on the calendar with one of our local recruiters that sits in Minneapolis. Um, They're always happy to chat with people whether it's about specific roles and you want to do a formal interview, or even if you just want a little bit more information about what is G4S, what's it about, what are some of the roles that you have, or the locations, um, they're happy to chat. And that, uh, that QR code will take you right to their calendar. And then obviously my contact information was on the first slide. So um, that is all I have. I do see some questions that have come through so I can tackle a couple of them that I didn't tackle already. Um, how many hours of work required to receive benefits? Anything 30 hours plus is considered full-time by federal government as well as for us. Um, I answered the driver's license one. Um, is the training a lower pay? Great question. Our training, which is three to four days, potentially depending on the site, is paid at minimum wage. Um, and then as soon as you get on site and you clear that training, you're paid your full wage that you signed up for. Thank you. I think, oh, go ahead. Uh, I, yeah, that's, I think that's mostly, and then the question about how you're handling COVID vaccinations was the other question. And that would be the same yep. for Allied Universal too. Yes, um, it's a great question. And it's something that we are trying to figure out internally, if, if I'm just going to be completely honest with everyone. As of right now, to answer the question bluntly, and anyone that doesn't have the chat open, the question is, is a COVID vaccination required for any position with G4S and Allied Universal? I can't speak for Allied. I can speak for G4S. The answer as it stands right now today is no. We are following CDC recommendations on everything. I have worked from my apartment <laughs> Uh, since October, um, anyone that goes into the office is wearing masks. So we're following all of those recommendations. But as of right now, until something changes with the guidelines put out by the, the CDC, um, the answer to that question is no, a vaccination is not required. Is wearing uniforms required? It is. There are different uniforms for different sites. We get everyone fitted um, and we get you all that set up before, um, before you go on site. Great. Thank you. Thank you to both of you. Um, and I really appreciate all of the information about, you know, being compassionate, driven, alert, thinking ahead. That's really helpful information. So thanks to Allied Universal in G4S and you have their contact information in the chat and I'll be sending it out later. But I'd like to move ahead now too. Um, and have the team from Al Alina Health talk about their security department. So this is security in a very specific healthcare focused environment. Janet, are you there? Yes, hi, I'm here. Um, hi. Thank you, Liz. I am, am also accompanied by two of our security managers. So if we go to the next slide, you'll actually see pictures of us and a little bit about each of us. We could skip that agenda right there. So I'm Janet, I am a part of the talent acquisition team and I've been with Alina Health since June of 2018, so three years now. Um, and with me, as I mentioned, I have these two great security managers, so I'll let them introduce themselves. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brian Mixdorf. I'm the security manager for Abbott Northwestern Hospital in South Minneapolis. I also am the manager of the training team for all of Alina Health and I'll turn it over to uh, have Steph introduce herself. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Stephanie Rice. I'm the security manager out of the Mercy and Unity campuses in Coon Rapids and Fridley, and I have been with since uh, 2015. So then we can go to the next slide. And we yeah. just want to talk a little bit about Alina Health, specifically Alina Health security team. So I'll let Stephanie and Brian kind of take over the majority of the presentation, and I'll just chime back in when it's um, in regards to the application process. Thank you, Janet. 
So, yeah, as you can see here, we have our mission statement and our mission is highly focused on the safety and security um, for all that enter our facilities. We partner with our local law enforcement, we identify risks, and we really make sure that we collaborate through leadership to focus on the priorities listed below and um, below our mission here, which obviously is the optimizing our resources, strengthening physical security through um, technology is really what we're focusing on um, highly these days is that technology piece. You know, we continue to develop within these priorities to enhance that mission. You'll see that we have a lot of responsibility as our department is continuing to grow, but so is our organization. Uh, we do have 12 hospitals that are within the uh, areas. We do have a couple that is like our new Alm and our Owatonna and Faribault that are a little bit more in the South Metro as I, um, I'm up in the North Metro in that Fridley and uh, Boone Rapids area. But we do have 122 clinics that are around all these different areas as well that we are responsible for. We do have other uh, locations as far as our CEC, which is our central communication center. And we just have a lot of kind of these one offs uh, areas that we're continuing to learn how to be a resource to them. And so it was like it, we're continuing to expand. In, in in our in in how we're just developing. I mean, it's a continuous continuous growth. We can go to the next slide. So I'll talk a little bit about benefits. Uh, employees that apply are benefits eligible with uh, six shifts per pay period. Um, most of the officers start um, at around eighteen to twenty dollars an hour. Uh, we have dispatch positions. We have three dispatch hubs around the metro. We're actually working on consolidating into one centralized dispatch center, which will be state of the art. Um, and uh, the starting wage for dispatchers is twenty to twenty two dollars an hour. Um, there are lots of developmental opportunities with Alina Health. Um, within security, you have, and we'll kind of go over the career path um, in a slide or two. But uh, the exciting thing is. The exciting thing is that Alina Health is on the, I would say, the healthier spectrum of the um, healthcare providers around the metro as far as the security departments go. And I think Alina has done a really well, a really good job and are well positioned uh, for the future in many respects. And with that comes an investment within our security department and um, the security officers. You can go to the next slide. So as Brian was stating, I mean, we obviously have um, a lot of opportunities here. So within our own department and the organization, either way, you're gonna have an opportunity. You're gonna have tools and resources that will develop your career path. For our particular department, the security officer role is the main function of what we do every day. And uh, this, I mean, this entails Everything between just, uh, you know, the customer service, de-escalation, responding to calls, um, making sure that you have that attention to detail, having the critical thinking, uh, working in stressful environments. But that security officer role is our primary role and everything that we feed off of and how we can continue to develop. You, Brian will talk more about the education and training, training piece as he said this is his expertise, so I'll let him handle that piece. We have an investigations um, team and they handle anything from fraud, medical fraud, um, risk mitigation, threat assessment, uh, working with our local law enforcement teams at all those areas to ensure that we are keeping each of our facilities um, safe. You obviously can go into that path of leadership management, supervision, uh, it, director. We uh, recently, our, our boss um, just created a new role within our organization was the chief security officer. And so again, it's just another way to show how we are uh, developing and growing within this organization within healthcare. Technology, as I already stated, is a huge piece. We have a centralized uh, GSOC, which is what we call our security operations center. And that is where our dispatchers work. And as Brian alluded to, we're moving into condensing that. And we're gonna be basing a lot of our future uh, roles, not roles, but our future, uh, how we're going to mitigate a lot of the issues and concerns that we have through technology. We're going to utilize that our cameras, our access control, and uh, let alone just understanding how we can secure our campuses better. Uh, the other thing too is looking at analytics and intelligence. Uh, we really, we solely focus on our data 
what our call services are, what risks we're running into, what risks the community has, and how that might be affecting any of our facilities. And so that is something that is a 24-7 um, role because it's being monitored. We want to make sure that we're ahead of what is occurring and how we can mitigate any of that, that risk. Actually, if we could just go back, I'll talk a little bit about training. I'm sorry. So the training department, um, I manage the training department as well as the security team for Abbott Hospital. And I must say, I'm really proud of the training team. We do, uh, our training is top of the line. We do use of force training, um, which encompasses all use of force, uh, all the tools that the officer has in their belt, uh, you will be certified to use. Um, and what I'll say is that uh, we are, in, in, in a lot of respects, uh, the only thing with our group that um, uh, differentiates you from a police officer is you're not sworn, right? But we do a, a lot of calls just like a police officer would do uh, in many respects, but we are not sworn. We're not police officers. We are security officers for the hospital. We do uh, healthcare, a lot of healthcare intervention with the doctors and nurses. Um, and for those that have come from a law enforcement career or would like to go into a law enforcement career, your career path as, a, as an Alliance security officer is a really good stepping stone for that. Um, um, and so one thing I'll mention too is uh, the um, intelligence team. We did a lot of work in the community to keep our patients safe around the, the Chauvin trial and making sure that um, all of our clinics and hospitals are safe. There was some unrest as most people know, and so our intelligence team worked very closely with the management team and the officers to keep our facilities safe throughout that whole trial. So we can go to the next slide. So this is a picture of uh, some training uh, training pictures. We are actually developing um, a state-of-the-art training center um, that will have all state-of-the-art equipment. The officers are authorized to carry tasers, so they are certified to use a taser. Um, as part of their training, their new employee orientation, and also their annual use of force training that I mentioned earlier. Um, we are part of the, 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 the um, a patient care team. So unfortunately, as most people know in the security industry, not everyone behaves. And for those people that uh, get involved in preventing a safe and secure environment for our doctors and nurses and other staff, as well as our patients, we do, um, have the ability to to take that person away from that scene and, and dealt with by the authorities. We can move on to the next slide. And I, Janet, thank you for answering the questions that are in there. Uh, just to answer one of the questions, uh, someone had asked where will the dispatch center be located? That just has not been determined yet. So we're not we're not 100% sure where that is gonna be located at this time. Um, thank you for asking those questions. So what we're looking for in a candidate, you know, we would like you to meet the requirements, but what's most important is just that customer service um, aspect. I mean, we work in healthcare and at the end of the day, it's about that patient and it's about that visitor and it's about our staff. And we want to make sure that, I mean, anybody that comes into a healthcare facility environment, it's not typically for their, their best reason. Um, so we really put it on um, the officers and Alina as a whole that, our whole patient, our whole, it's the whole person care is what we call it, is what's important. And um, we're, we're expected within the, our role to have the answers. We're expected to be the ones um, to kind of guide anybody that comes into our facility and give them the tools and answers that they need. So obviously that customer service piece is huge. Um, we would love, you know, attention to detail, critical thinking, you know, uh, making sure that you're motivated, going above and beyond, you're social, you're caring, professional. Um, again, I just, it, I can't stress the uh, the passion that comes behind this job. And I did start out as an officer within this organization and I did work my way up and it's a very rewarding job. It's something that you can leave at the end of the day and know that you helped somebody and you cared for somebody and you did uh, everything that you could. And the best part about it is the collaboration that we have with all the departments within the facility. Um, I'm sorry, within the organization. Uh, we work very close with nursing staff. We are considered a part of that patient care team. And so therefore, uh, for how involved we get uh, with these particular patients, 
uh, to really get them what they need. It's very important and it's very rewarding and uh, I can just personally speak to that. But it's a it's a very rewarding job is the best way to put it. And I, I wouldn't uh, change it for anything. And then the opportunities are endless to you can kind of create your own career path within our department, but also within the organization. Okay, we can move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so this is some information um, on how to apply, and I'll have Jana talk about that. Okay, awesome. And I'll just go real fast because I know we're running out of time. But basically, you just visit our career site. You, there's an image of it right here on the left. You hit search and apply for a job, and you can search for security officer or security dispatch, whichever one calls your attention more. But just make sure you read through the, the job requirements um, and make sure you're qualified and interested in the specific job you're applying to. There's a lot of things to consider, like the location. We're all across Minnesota. So make sure the location works for you as well as the work schedule. Um, and then just want to remind everyone, we're getting a ton of applicants all the time. We're a company that employs 29,000 people. So just make sure to be patient. Um, the process is kind of listed out below, but it does take some time for the recruiter to review, the hiring manager to review, and then to hopefully set up an interview. Um, so just be patient and stay motivated. And if it doesn't work out, continue applying with us. There's tons of other positions, customer experience, hooks, EVS, all different kinds of roles that we can get you in. Next slide, please. That was it. <laughs> um, but there's our contact information. Um, please feel free to reach out. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to get you in contact with um, either if it's not for security, if it's for some other role, I'd be more than happy to get you in contact with a different recruiter and especially happy to get you moving through this process with one of our security officer dispatch roles. Thank you, Janet. And, you know, I just wanted to point out to all of the people on the call that when you and I talked too, you mentioned the need for bilingual uh, security officers, um, you know, yeah. people who speak, uh, you know, a range of the languages that Minnesota has. Yeah, one of our, um, of the line of health as a whole, one of our big initiatives is trying to get our workforce to reflect the communities we serve. And so we're in South Minneapolis, we're in St. Paul, we're in these very diverse communities. And so we would love to get candidates that can speak Hmong, Somali, Spanish, all these different languages, and that really can interact with our patients and provide a, the best experience for them as possible. So definitely, if you are bilingual, that's a huge plus. We would love to see your application come in. Um, and also, Liz, you had mentioned a concern about age. There is, there, we hire a ton of people from a, a wide variety of different age groups. Um, really don't let that be uh, something that discourages you from applying with us. Um, we get a lot of actually retired police officers that come and work for us as well. So that is a group that we, we love to have come on board with us as well. One Great. thing I'll Great. add, just yeah. um, yeah. so important differentiation between um, this job and, a, and a, what I think most people consider to be a standard security officer job is that this is not a stand on the X security position. Uh, the officers uh, routinely patrol in cars and on foot. They're constantly moving. They're responding to calls. For example, my hospital, my officers um, take about a thousand calls a year for service within the hospital around the, around the hospital. Um, we are located in South Minneapolis, so we're right in the middle of some uh, activity that uh, is uh, can come into the hospital. So we're constantly running, much like a police department would. We also have helicopter operations, so we do get a, quite a few helicopters coming here with with patients, and so. Uh, we kind of consider this to be a small city. I think Steph can can also uh, testify that her hospitals in the North Metro um, are very busy as well. So I just think that that's important to mention because we don't have many sit behind the desk positions. We are a very active and involved security department for Atlanta Health because we are actively involved in the health care of our patients. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, for another perspective on the security industry, I'd like to invite Twee Tron of Minnesota Department of Corrections to talk. Uh, State of Minnesota is in great need of people to work in the correctional system. So Twee, take it away. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much, Liz. Hi, everyone. My name is Tui Tran. I am the state program administrator for the Department of Corrections. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much, Liz, for hosting today. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, uh, Career Force, for um, um, having us join. And thank you to everyone who's actually um, on the call with us today as well. So if you want to go, go ahead and jump onto the next slide. Um, so the Minnesota Department of Correction is focused on transforming lives for our state from Minnesota. Uh, we do have about 4,000 correctional um, professionals who work in our department to keep uh, Minnesotans safe by in supervising incarcerated people in our state correctional facility and in the community. So through our mission, we are also committed to practice equal opportunity in employment to increase the diversity of our workforce and reflect the work in the community that we serve. Um, again, we have 4,000 correctional facilities, 11 correctional, or 11, or sorry, 4,000 correctional professionals, 11 correctional facilities, 15 field service offices. Um, we are the third largest state employer in the state of Minnesota, um, you know, as you may or may not know, the state of Minnesota is one of the, uh, I would say the second largest employer um, in the state with over 10,000 employees. So on behalf of just not Minnesota Department of Corrections, we do have other agencies as well, where the state of Minnesota does serve over about 100 plus agencies across the state as well. So not every job positions may fit your needs in corrections, but we can refer you out to other state agencies as well. And if, if you want to move on to the next slide, please. So the great thing about working for the state of Minnesota and for corrections is that we have amazing state benefits. Uh, we have vacation, sick hours, we accumulate about four hours per period, um, a lot of sick time, a lot of times, um, we actually roll over, I think, 275 hours per year. So you actually don't lose a lot of your time. Um, if you come to retirement and you haven't used your time, we do pay out on that, which is amazing. We have very competitive health, dental, and life insurance. We also have a pension. We are unionized. So there are um, times where you would get a union increase as well as a performance increase in pay. We have 11 paid holidays, um, some pre-tax pre benefits that we offer as well. Um, we have uh, what we call it a, um, well, I should just say retirement. It's kind of like a 401k. So um, some something similar to, I don't know, what is it called again, Liz? Uh, the retirement, the deferred compensation is the, the technical term. So that is, pretty much your 401k where you can actually double dip into your pension and retirement. And we also have some other benefits as far as employee assistance programming, um, public student loan forgiveness programs, what, which is one of my favorite benefits for working at the state of Minnesota is that I am a college graduate. I do have student loans and working in the state of Minnesota, you do um, and working government sector, I, sh I should say, not just state of Minnesota, but in government sector, um, there is a program called Public Student Loan Forgiveness, where if you are employed for 10 years, all your student loans would be forgiven. Um, and then in addition to some of the benefits that we have, we also have fitness fitness centers at all facilities, in including our central office administration building. Okay, move on to the next slide. Right now, we are hiring uh, training correction officer positions. Uh, may, many of you may know uh, we are security job as well. So we do um, supervise incarcerated individuals within our state correctional facilities. We have facilities all across the state um, coming from Lionel Lakes, Oak Park Heights. Uh, we have our women's facility in Shakopee, Stillwater, Moose Lake, all the way up into Togo even, that's, which is pretty much towards Canada. We have a facility in Rush City, St. Cloud, um, Fairbowl, and then lastly, we have our Red Wing uh, facility, which is also our juvenile facility. And some of the qualifications that does require, and the amazing thing about actually becoming a correction officer is that we do not 
require any security background. We do have six weeks paid paid training, which we start at twenty one dollars and six cents, and um and that that rate might be going up here soon. Um, considering we are ending our fiscal year twenty one, so depending on budgetary, um, you know, legislative sessions and all, we. Our, our, the wage might go up again soon. Um, and so some of the requirements that we have are the minimum qualifications that you must be 18 years um, of age to work at a correctional facility and then 21 to work for uh, Red Wing, which is our juvenile facility. And then um, you must have a high school diploma or GED and then be able to obviously um, pass a criminal history check. And a lot of questions that we do get on um, occasionally is do we take do we take individuals who has a record? And the, the short answer is yes. It just it again, it's always based on a um, case to case basis. So if you ever have any questions, we do um, encourage everyone to reach out to our um, HR representative at each and every single one of our job postings. And then lastly, the, um, the last requirement for us is um, you must have a valid driver's license. Um, in addition to our training correction officer positions, we do have um, we do have healthcare positions within our facility. So we do have um, licensed practical nurses. Uh, we have um, certified CNAs. We have registered nurses, clinical program therapists. And many, many of you may or may not know that we do, we are very heavily focused on programming in our correctional facility. So when we are supervising incarcerated individuals within our state facilities, we are very focused on um, uh, getting these individuals to have the education that they need. So we do administer like GED testing, for example. So we do have teachers within our facilities. We have individuals who, are interested in cutting hair, for example. There are there are so many different kind of um, positions that are available within corrections. We have chemical program therapists, sex offender treatment program, and we have a mental health, um, psychology positions, all sorts of different um, positions within corrections. In addition, we do have facility maintenance workers as well, which we call a physical plant maintenance workers. Uh, we we are required to have plumbers. We, we we need electricians within our facilities to make sure that we have um, general even general workers, for example, or electricians, uh, plant engineers. We have a lot of those positions open throughout the state as well. And lastly, we do have uh, cook coordinating positions. Um, I believe we have a couple of them open as of today. If you can move on to the next slide, Liz. So in order to view our jobs, um, we do encourage you to visit us at mn.gov slash careers. Um, you want to click on the search for jobs now on the external applicant link and then filter by corrections department. We have about, I believe, 30 something positions open today. Some of these do have multiple openings as far as correction officer positions. We do have about 100 statewide. Uh, we are looking to fulfill uh, with immediate opens opening in Fairboat, Stillwater, Oak Park Heights, Moose Lake, um, and Rush City. Uh, we are hiring at other facilities as well, but just for immediate um, for immediate scheduling and everything, we are hiring in those primary facilities I just mentioned. And then you want to register as a new user, or well, you know, once you, you kind of see the job that you like, then you want to re re register as a new user to create a profile. And then from there, you can kind of um, set up a, a job search agent and then um, you know filter all the things all the positions that you are interested in and get a um, pretty much get a mail list from there and then um, I did indicate I do have on here the job line um, information number and email in case if after hours you are having um, technical difficulties applying for a job. If you don't know your user um, name or password, or you forgot your password, whatever the case may be, 
um, this information here is very helpful for you in case you are running into any issues and are not able to get a hold of me. Um, and then I think that's the, the last of my slide, is it? Yep, and then again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, let me know if you have any questions and I will go ahead and have Liz um, send out um, my contact information as you need as well. And my contact will is information is also provided on the first slide. Great, thank Great. you. Um, question, do you have any facilities in the Rochester area? I heard you say Faribault, right? Yep, so we aren't far from Faribault. So we do have Red Wing and Faribault, and I don't know exactly how many miles, but I know, I know that we have a lot of employees that are actually traveling to Faribault from Rochester. I don't, I should probably look at the radius, but it, I know it's fairly, very close. Right. And right. Faribault Good. is our largest, um, our uh, Faribault is our largest facility. And then we also have Red Wing as well. So, which I know that some of our recruiters at, um, at Red Wing are focused on a registered Rochester right. area as well. Right. Well, thank you very much for being here. Um, I appreciate all of this. You know, I'm not even quite sure. We were supposed to have JBM patrol. Is, is anyone from JBM here right now? No, I was looking for the person's name. It was a Liz or a Sean. Okay. Well, JBM was another facility, uh, another security industry that, um, yes, I hear crickets. Correct. Um, they were supposed to be here and they had a couple of uh, uh, things go on with their schedule today. But um, they too are an option in the security industry. And I'll just type in their uh, email address or their URL. And then you can take a look to see if that is um, something that you're interested. If you are, I can put you in touch with their recruiter and their area managers. But thank you to um, everyone on the call, Allied, Alina Health, Department of Corrections, and G4S. Um, I say this every week, too, just a reminder, if you're new today, uh, CareerForceMN.com has the Explore Careers um, section. And you can type in, you know, a keyword such as security. It will give you a great deal of information. I just posted a few of the, the things that come up, you know, consider these job titles when you're looking for doing a search. It has labor market information on the different regions and, and the anticipated growth of that industry. And um, it has some videos that our partners at Career One Stop put together and then we link to it. So uh, please use that Explore Careers information. Um, next couple of weeks coming up, next week, we're gonna be focusing on natural resources, the resources of water, mineral, land, uh, air. I don't know if I have anyone from the air, soil. So um, it's going to be a, another conversation where I personally am going to learn a lot about that industry. Um, and then the following week, I'm working with a coworker on an agricultural focused industry. So we're really making the rounds of all of the different possibilities. Um, I do want to point out to all of you on this, the security jobs, I had a Transportation Security Administration, TSA, um, from the MSP airport on May 18th. So I encourage you to review that portion of the conversation. You can go to YouTube, to careerforcemn.com, to the Explore Careers pay playlist, and it's in there. Um, I'll put that in the email I send out to all of you to follow up, so you can review that. But I know the federal government has quite a few open security positions, too, with TSA at the airport. A couple of other job fairs going on this week. Anoka County online job fair is tomorrow morning, 1030 AM. Um, easy virtual fair software. You can pre-register. Um, I'll send out this information. They've got quite a few people and Dep Department of Corrections will be there again. 
along with uh, some home health aid companies, FedEx, Streamworks, Coburn's, Cintas. The next day, that same office is having a drive through job fair. Yes, um, in person, you don't need to pre-register. Just if you have a car at um, transportation, drive to their main office uh, in Blaine. It's off of Central Avenue and 694 between 1 and 3 p.m. And they'll hand out bags of flyers from area employers. And so, too, if you have other people who you know that don't have a computer, don't have transportation, um, and you feel comfortable driving them, take them, bring them to that and pick up job information. Dakota, Scout Dakota and Scott counties are sponsoring an online job fair also June 17th. That's a Thursday. I believe it's at 1030 in the morning. Not quite sure. I'll check on that date. But they're going to focus on jobs that start on 18 or up. Um, I haven't seen the employer list, but they've got quite a few. So um, Lisa Odland is the contact for that. And all of these job fairs you can get from going to our online um, job fair calendar. I'm going to paste that. I can get to it quickly. Paste that in the job fair. There you Hi, go. Liz. Yeah. Liz is, a, Liz is Twee. So the South of the River um, Specialized Hiring Event is on Thursday, June 17th from 3 until 5 p.m. 3 until 5, thank you. In the email blast I got, it didn't have the time, so I was just guessing. <laughs> and <laughs> you'll see will also be there as well. Excellent. Thanks. 3 to 5 on Thursday, not 1030. So in any case, we've come to the end. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. I hope some of these links and these connections to jobs interest you. Email me anytime, liz.jennings at state.mn.us. And I'll keep this chat up for just a few minutes so you can uh, get some of the links out. Take care and see you next week.